I was on the phone and just about a week ago, I was on the telephone with Bishop Jonathan Earl Ziegler. And all he needs is one in his audience. He don't have to have a church full and he'll start preaching. And you don't even have to be there in front of him. You can just be on the telephone. And I was his audience and he started preaching. And man, about halfway through his sermon, the Lord spoke to me. And I told him, I said, Bishop Ziegler, you have inspired me for my Sunday morning sermon. For Easter Sunday, I'm going to preach. I know exactly what I'm going to preach now. Amen. How many of you have ever been doing something in particular, maybe you've been competing in something or running a race or something that you had to work hard to try to get done and you had somebody say, hey, don't quit, hang in there. Come on now. How many ever had somebody say, hang in there? Just hang in there. Hang in there is a term that, that came about somewhere, if you go back and study the origin of hang in there, it's somewhere, it came about somewhere in the early 70s, and it's got, you can go back and look it up, and you can see there's some things that's attached to it, but it's just a, it, it's just a phrase that we use when we say hang in there that literally means this, it just means to remain, don't give up, and don't quit. Just keep doing what you're doing. When you hang in there, you, you refuse to quit. You're going to remain where you are. I've come by this room to tell you that today, the reason we're in this room, the reason we are in this house today is because Jesus hung in there. Come on, somebody. Tell three people Jesus hung in there. It's because Jesus hung in there. I, I need about 50 people to help me preach, and I'll, I'll preach a real short, and we'll get out of here. Amen. Uh, 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 you, you know, uh, all right, y'all act like y'all don't believe that. Amen. But I, 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 I want to talk to you for the next few moments. The Lord spoke to me. I want to talk to you about the fact that Jesus hung in there. When we take a moment to look at the life of Jesus, we are reminded that in spite of, he hung in there. Matthew chapter 26 as Jesus was preparing, he had ended his life, was ending his life here on this earth, was in the final days before he would be offered up. Even the final moments and hours when he was offered up, before he was offered up in Matthew 26, verse 36, the Bible said, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And they saith unto disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. Jesus headed into the garden of Gethsemane he says to the ones who had walked close with him the disciples who had been there with Jesus walked through thick and thin if you will with him he said I'm struggling with this moment right now and I need to spend some time with my father and I want you guys to help me intercede you ever been in a situation where you needed somebody to help you pray come on he said but 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 this is what I got to do I got to go off by myself but I want y'all to stay right here and I'm going to go over here and pray. Watch what he says. Well, I go pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be, to be sorrowful and, and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here. Watch with me. And he went a little further. He took a, 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 a group with him so far. And then he said, I need y'all to stay here. I'm going further. But I want y'all to stay right here. And I want you to tarry. I want you to pray. And he fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but thou wilt. And he cometh unto the disciples. And notice what he finds, ladies and gentlemen. He finds them asleep. And he saith unto Peter, What could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them, watch, asleep again. Look at somebody next to you. Say, them rascals were asleep again. He came back and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy, and, they, and he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the words. 
This is what I need you to understand. These are men who walked with Jesus, walked close with him, walked through the thick, walked through the thin, walked through the fire with him, saw him do miracles. He taught them. He poured into them. He did everything he could with them. Jesus is now walking through a tough time because he is now about to fulfill the assignment that he has on his life. And the assignment that he has on his life is not an easy assignment because he's about to offer his life. He is about to be crucified. He's about to go through torture. He's about... He's about to be offered up and he's struggling within his flesh. And as he struggles within himself, he looks to the ones who walk with him and he says, listen, I got to go here and pray, but I need you boys to help me out. Stay right here and pray. So he goes and prays and when he comes back, he finds the ones who had walked so closely to him and the ones that he had poured so much into them, he finds them asleep. And then he goes back to pray and comes back and finds them asleep again. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, today that in spite of the fact that he had surrounded himself with some men who were who in the midst of his trouble were apathetic, they were complacent, they were lethargic, they had gone to sleep on Jesus at a tough time in his life. I've come by to tell somebody in spite of the apathetic ones who walked closest to him, he hung in there. Jesus hung in there. In Matthew 26, 47 through 50, you know the story. I'm not going to take time to read it all today. Jesus has gone from the Garden of Gethsemane. He's gone from this place of struggling. And he's gone from this place of, of struggling in such a way the Bible said that his sweat became like drops of blood. He's agonizing before God. And as he's there, they, they come to get Jesus. And when they come to get Jesus, they've got one of his 12 with him. Now, one of the 12, that's folks that knew Jesus like nobody else knew Jesus. But yet one of his 12, one of the closest ones to him, he, he, he comes to do something that's beyond belief. One that, that God had poured, Jesus had poured so much into is now leading the ones who are coming to kill Jesus. He leads them to Jesus and even goes up and plants a kiss of betrayal upon the cheek of Jesus. Jesus said, as, I mean, Judas says, as, as they give him the 30 pieces of silver because he has allowed greed to take over, Judas says, the one that I go and the one that I kiss is the one, that's him and that's the one you'll take away. And he goes and plants a kiss on the cheek of Jesus and he betrays Jesus and they take him to be crucified. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, in spite of the lethargic ones that fell asleep on him in the garden of Gethsemane and in spite of the one who was supposed to walk closest to him but now has betrayed him. Jesus hung in there. Come on, look at somebody next to you and say, he hung in there. In spite of everything, he hung in there. I got news for you. I serve a God that doesn't give up. I serve a God that doesn't quit. I serve a God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he changes not. I wish I had 50 people in this room today that understood we serve a God that does not give up. He hung in there. In spite of it, he hung in there. It gets worse because Jesus has one apostle that walks closer to him than any other. He's got the, he got the apostle that was standing there with him in John chapter 6 when multitudes started leaving Jesus and Jesus would turn and look at this apostle and he would say, are you going to go too? And Peter said, well, I ain't got nowhere to go, Lord. Where am I going to go? You're the only one that has eternal life. You're the only, I'm, I'm sticking right here, Jesus. I got a revelation of you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to stay right here with you, but here's what happens. Something transpires and something changes in Matthew chapter 26. Jesus has been taken by the, the Roman soldiers and he's taken into a place to be judged. As they take Jesus in, they start to criticize and ridicule him. As a matter of fact, they take it to the place that they try to humiliate him in the way that they spit in his face. This dear, beloved apostle Peter, the one who had walked close to Jesus, the one who Jesus had to guard because Peter was always sticking his foot in his mouth. 
Come on, somebody. The one that walked close to Jesus, the closest of his apostles, is sitting on the outside while Jesus is suffering these things, while he's being ridiculed, and while they're spitting in the face of our Lord, Peter is sitting out there, and while he's sitting outside, knowing what's happening to his beloved Savior, being as close as he was to Jesus, somebody approaches him and says, wait a minute, you one of them Jesus followers. He said, uh-uh. You not me. No, I'm not. Wait a minute, Peter, what you saying? Then he's approached by another, and they say, yeah, yes, you are. As a matter of fact, one of them said, you talk like them. Read your Bible. You talk like one of them Jesus followers. Peter said, mm-mm, not me. Not me, mm-mm, not me. Somebody shake your head like this, say, mm-mm, not me. Peter said, uh-uh, not me. Peter said it's not, and the third time Peter denied him. Can you, un, can you imagine what it must have felt like? Can you imagine at this point in time when, when Jesus is sitting there all vulnerable, he's been stripped, he's been beaten, they're spitting in his face, face they're, they're ridiculing him, and even the closest ones to him have begun to walk away. As he's sitting there agonizing about this moment, he could not get the 12 to intercede with him. They were sleeping. As he's sitting there in the garden and he's getting ready to leave one of the twelve that's supposed to be close to him is now putting a kiss of betrayal on his face as he leaves there and now he's in this and he's being judged and they're spitting at him and mocking him even the closest one to him now says I deny him I don't even know him he won't even be called by his name but can I tell you something ladies and gentlemen that's the kind of God that I serve no matter if they hang with him in prayer no matter matter if they despise him and reject him. He said, I'm going to hang in there. Look at somebody next to you, smile real big and say, Jesus hung in there. Oh, you might give up, but Jesus don't give up. The thing about it is, is that he gets beyond this point, and ladies and gentlemen, it only gets worse. Because for the next few moments, I want you to listen to me because I'm going to share something with you you need to hear in your spirit today. Because following this, as they take Jesus in, Jesus will now face and endure a trial. Listen to me closely. Don't let any, anything take your mind off what God is saying today. Jesus would endure a, a trial that would consist of six parts. Three stages in a religious court and three stages before Roman court. Listen closely. Jesus would have to now, before those hateful, ugly, religious people. How many of you know that some of the most ugly people in the world can be religious folks? Now I'm talking about folks that look like something but full of dead men's bones. I can't get no help in here. They talk about being saved. They talk about being holy and talk about being righteous, but they don't love nobody. Y'all don't want to hear me today. Jesus has to endure something. Then Jesus endured a trial. He had endured a trial that had six parts. He endured, first of all, he had to endure all of the illegalities of the Jewish court in which because they were after the head of Jesus in such a way, they were willing to discard their own laws in order to convict Jesus. Y'all better hear me. Pay attention. They were... They, they were willing to discard them. As a matter of fact, when we look into it and we study, we understand that Jesus was convicted by acclamation only. When by Jewish law, it was required that each member of the court was supposed to have a vote whether or not Jesus would be acquitted or whether he was found guilty. But yet, at this particular time, they didn't vote it was only by acclamation. He didn't get a fair trial. Secondly, if the death penalty was, be, was to be given, it, a night had to pass before the sentence was carried out. Not with Jesus. Jesus was placed on the cross in just a few hours. They were, they, they were negating all of their legalities. They were negating all of their laws. They were looking beyond why because they were after Jesus. Look at somebody next to you say they were after Jesus. So here Jesus is. He's in this court and he's not getting a fair trial. N number three, no trial was to be held at night. 
But his trial was held before dawn. Number four, the accused was to be given counsel. He was supposed to have a counsel, someone who represented him, but Jesus was given none. Mm-hmm. But he hung in there. He, he stayed in there. And when they finished this, this, this trial, this, the first three parts of his trial in front of the religious leaders, now he's taken to the most horrible part of his experience yet. Hear me, church, don't miss this. We're almost out of here in just a minute. Jesus is taken to the most horrible, gruesome part of his trial. You see, after he went before all of these religious leaders, he was brought before the Roman authorities. First of all, G Jesus was beaten. After he was beaten, he was taken to Pilate, and once taken to Pilate, he was passed from Pilate to Herod and back to Pilate. Pilate said, I can't find any fault in this man. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to do what they want me to do. And because I don't want to deal with it, I'm going to send him to Herod. He sends him to Herod, and Herod gives way to political pressure. He doesn't want to deal with it and sends him back to Pilate. Now, this is what I want you to hear. The sorrowful thing and one of the most gruesome things that Jesus had to face was when he was brought back to Pilate. When they brought Jesus back to Pilate, Pilate had to do something to try to appease the angry mob that was crying, crucify him. He had to do something to try to make himself look good. He had to do something to try to take care of his, uh, of his political reputation. And so, so Pilate orders the, the most horrible, gruesome part of the crucifixion of Jesus. He orders what the Romans would call a scourging. Jesus was taken and he was scourged. And what, what, when you look into Roman history, what a scourging was involved was it was literally a process of beating that was designed that when the whip would, would cross the back of the person being beat, that it would attach itself to the back of, of the victim and it would literally rip the meat from their back. I need you to understand prior to this time that that was done a few times on the, on the normal uh, 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 criminal or the normal one that was being crucified, but not Jesus. They had to make a mockery of him. They had to make an example of him. And so what did they do? They took this, this, this thing, this instrument with metal that was attached to the ends of it and bone and glass that was woven into it. And, and they would lay it across the back of Jesus and it would attach itself. And then the Roman soldier would pull it from the back of our Lord. It wouldn't happen once or twice or five times or ten times, but 39 different times it did. See, this is what the kind of God that I serve. I need you to understand that it was during this time that Jesus began to think about what his assignment was. I believe, I believe that Jesus started to think about it and he had to just zone out for just a moment and realize why he was beating, why he was being beat. Why was he being beat? It was, it was a fulfillment of prophecy for the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Can you imagine it ladies and gentlemen? Can you imagine and how it was to be in the mind of Jesus? Can you imagine how Jesus was when they laid him over that old whipping post and that Roman soldier took that thing back for the first time and laid it across the back of Jesus. That Roman soldier thought that he was killing Jesus. He thought he was messing Jesus up but the first time he laid it across his back I can imagine Jesus saying, mm, that one was for cancer. <laughs> That one was for sugar diabetes. That was for high blood pressure. That was for mental illness. That was for any and every disease. Every stripe that Jesus took was for you and I. I've come by this room to tell you, it doesn't make any difference how many people turn their back on him, how many people give up on him, how many people deny him, how many times he gets beat. I've got a lot of God that hangs in there. Come on, somebody, give him praise if you know he hung in there. He hung in there. They beat Jesus. They beat him beyond recognition. They scourged him. Pilate said, I, I don't know what to do with this man. 
I've done everything I can with him. He still won't deny who he is. Hello, somebody. Thank God he hung in there. He won't deny who he is. Then Pilate said, you know what? What if I give you the most notorious criminal we have in our prison? I'll give you the most notorious one we have, an old man by the name of Barabbas. He's no good. He's a thief. He's a criminal. He's a murderer. He's no good at all. I'll give you him. Crucify him instead of Jesus. I can't find no fault in this Jesus. The most innocent man that they have in custody is the one that they're asking to be crucified. My God, I can't get help in this church today. He said, why don't you? He said, Let, let's take Barabbas. Take Barabbas out there. Won't y'all crucify him? He deserves it, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't do it. He said, give us Jesus. They take my Lord and Savior. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They lay him on a wooden cross. They drive nails in his feet and in his hands. They hang Jesus on that cross, and history tells us that so that he could even breathe, he would have to pull himself up on those nails, ripping the flesh in his hands and his feet to get his breath. Jesus hung there for you and I. He was crucified for us. Ladies and gentlemen, what makes him the King of kings and the Lord of lords? What is another testimony of who he is? Is the fact that this is what happens after Jesus was hung on that cross. When he got ready to give up the ghost and he hung his head, the Bible said the moment he dropped his head as he gave up the ghost, that the earth shook and the veil of the temple was rent in two. And you and I were given direct access into the Holy of Holies, into the place where God is. Come on, somebody. He gave his life so you and I could be reconciled to God. We were forever separated from the presence of God. But Jesus, look at somebody and say, because he hung in there. He hung in there and he gave his life. They took Jesus off of that cross and they put him in a borrowed tomb mm. borrowed everybody say borrowed he had to go in a borrowed tomb three days he was in that borrowed tomb three days think about what it must have been like in hell for those three days I mean they are <laughs> I mean in hell they're dropping it in hell I'm telling you they are having a time in hell. The devil his, and his, all his angels, his imps, they're partying. They're having a good time. Jesus is laid out there. He's dead. But then on the third day, something started happening. Jesus laid out there, and all of a sudden, I can imagine as, as, as just a little twitch in his hand or a little twitch of his toe that hell began to tremble. The enemy starts saying, wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute, huh? Something ain't right. <laughs> Something just ain't right. <laughs> All the imps of hell are going, oh, we in trouble. <laughs> we, we were supposed to have killed him, but he ain't dead. Come on, somebody. Can I tell you that that party lasted for three days? But because my, my Lord, somebody say my Lord, because my Lord hung in there on the third day, he wrecked hell's party. On the third day, he come up out of the grave. And when he came out of the grave, he came out with the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He came out victorious. He defeated death. Come on, somebody. He arose on that third day. And thanks be unto God, because he is alive today, you and I can live. Because he lives, you and I live today. We live today because Jesus lived. Through everything, he hung in there. Through everything, he hung in there. My Lord Jesus, after... After that third day, see, let me, let, let, me, let me go ahead and tell you, Jesus just disappeared. He just gone. What you mean? Roman soldiers were placed outside the tomb of Jesus. When you study the history, you find out that when they were taken 
when they asked the Roman soldiers to go guard the tomb, this is what they said to them. They said, hey, guys, we need you all to go guard the tomb. And if you do a good job, we're going to give you a bonus. But if you don't, we're going to cut your head off. Now, that's what the, honestly, they, you know, now the bonus part, I added that in there for good measure. That's a little bow one and one. Amen. But, but, but the, but the, them taking their head off was the punishment. If you go to sleep. And allow something to happen to the body of Jesus, we're going to take your head off. Honey, you don't need no Maxwell House to stay awake then. You don't need no Red Bull. You don't need to drink no Monster Drink. Come on, somebody. You sit all up in there with your eyes wide open. I mean, you hear every cricket. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. What was that? Did he move? Come on, somebody. They're going to be wide awake because there ain't no way they're going to let No, I, I am. And you know you are too. It'll be the moment that you could just stay up all night long and ain't worried about nothing. They said, if you, if you, if you let something happen, we're going to take your head off. But somewhere in the middle of the night, somebody snuck by on. Because the next morning, according to Matthew chapter 28, verse 5 and 6, Mary and Mary Magdalene come to the tomb of Jesus to try to find him. When they get there, <laughs> that, that something had happened. A, 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 an earthquake took place and the stone had been rolled back. When the stone rolled back, the Bible says, read your Bible, the Bible says that an angel came and sat down on top of that rock. The Bible said the face of the angel was like lightning. His clothing was splendor and white. Come on, somebody. And this is what the angel said to Mary when they came. They said, "Here, this is what he said in Matthew 28, 5 and 6. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He's not here. He ain't here. Jesus ain't here. Watch this. For he is risen just like he said. Y'all ain't in this room today. He got up out of there just like he told you he was going to come and see. I want you to see where the, the, the place where the Lord lay. I want you to walk in here as eyewitnesses of the very fact that your Lord was in this grave. There were Roman soldiers that were guarding it, and they said, we're going to take your head off if either one of you move. But somehow he got up out of here, and we can't find him. You know why? Because he's not dead anymore. He is alive. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him all over me today. Somebody put your hands together and shout because Jesus is alive. Woo! Jesus is alive today. Jesus is alive today. Jesus, the words of the Lord will come forth in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18 to, to tell you this today because Jesus hung in there. Say it to somebody. He hung in there. Because he hung in there. Revelation 1 18 says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. <laughs> That's why the Apostle Paul could proclaim to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 57, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Can I tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, that the way that God gave us the victory through his son was that his son would not give up. He hung in there. Somebody praise him today because he hung in there. Today you can live and live forever. Woo! He hung. Jesus, Jesus hung in there. And you know who he hung in there for today? You know who he hung in there for? He hung in there for all the preachers in America. 
be hung in there for the folks that are members of the church of God in Cleveland, Tennessee. Jesus hung in there. That's, that's, that's the only ones he hung in there for. Only, he just hung in there for the Baptist. Jesus only hung in there. For, he, just, he just hung in there for the Methodist. Only, only ones Jesus hung in there for was for, for the Presbyterians. Jesus only hung in there for those of you who've been serving God for 20 or 30 years and you're close to God now and you don't cuss or drink or smoke or chew or run with those who do. Come on, somebody. You don't do none of that kind of stuff no more. That's the only, that's the only one Jesus hung in there for. He, he just hung in there for you. No, see, I need you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus hung, on, hung in there for the prostitute that's on the street of Macon today as she's trying to find her way home. No, no, I came here to preach today. I said, Jesus, Je Jesus hung in there for that homeless man that's down on the corner today, and he don't even know where he lives, and he don't know where, where he belongs anymore, and he don't even know where his family's at. Jesus, Jesus hung in there for the crack addict that's over at the crack house this morning. Don't realize, don't even know how he got there. He, he just knows all he lives every day for a new fix, every day. Jesus hung in there for that gang that's over there on the other part, in the other part of town. Not even that, on the other part of town, that gang that's over, not too far from where we are right now. Jesus hung in there for the, for the, not only just the drug user, Jesus hung in there for the drug pusher. Come on, somebody. Jesus hung in there for the drunkard. Jesus hung in there for the, uh, for those that are sexual perverted. Jesus hung in there for the ones who are living a homosexual lifestyle and a lesbian lifestyle. Jesus hung in there for the adulterer. Jesus hung in there for the fornicator. Jesus hung in there for the, those that are weak and frail and lonely. Jesus hung in there. Whosoever will, let them come and drink of the water of life freely. That's who Jesus hung in there for. See, I need, I need you to know this is the one time of the year that everybody goes to church. And some of you, you know, it's been since last Easter, 2017, since you was at church. And this year, it was going to be just a routine visit to get the family off your back. We're going to go to church together. We're going to dress up good, put on our nice clothes go to Easter service, go to grandma's house afterwards. We're going to eat some fried chicken, some collard greens, some red velvet cake, pecan pie, whipped cream. Come on, somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost in here today. Amen. Listen to me. We're going to go and we're going to eat good and then we're going to go hunt eggs and we're going to have some fun and we're going to do all that. And that was it. But then something happened and you found yourself in the place and in the position that you came to church this morning, not just out of routine, but you've been going through some struggles in your life, and you've been feeling all alone, and you felt like that, that you had been so bad and so ugly that Jesus couldn't love you, but you came here today in hopes of maybe he'll give me a chance. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, he'll do just that for you. He'll, do, he, he'll give you a chance. Some of you here feel like you've gone too far, don't gone too much, been too ugly, experimented with too much, and said there's just no way Jesus could love me. He could care for me. Let me tell you something. He hung in there just for you. No matter what you've been through today, he hung in there for you. Stand with me all over the room, every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking around, everyone reverencing, please, the house of God. This is a very crucial moment for somebody in their life. Somebody's about to make a life decision. Not just a life on this earth decision, but an eternal life decision. Reverencing the house of the Lord, every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. How many of you will say without a doubt in your mind, Pastor, I'm going to be real and straight up. I'm saved. I know I'm saved. Don't have a doubt. I'm on my way to heaven. There is not a single doubt in my mind. Raise your hand. Let me see your hand. Not a single doubt in my mind. I'm saved and I know I'm saved. I'm saved and I know I'm saved. Thank you. Put your hands down. This is what the Scripture says. The Scripture says this about the Lord. It says, if, you'll, if you're ashamed of me before men, then I'll be ashamed of you before my Father which is in heaven. Some of you in this room, I looked around the room and I saw several people who could not lift your hand because you know that you know that you're not where you need to be with God. And what I need you to do over this next minute in this service is I need you to be real with yourself and I need you to be real with God. I need you to be real with yourself and to be real with God. How many in this room would say, Pastor, 
the reason I didn't lift my hands is because I know I, I have to be truthful. I know I'm not where I need to be. But you know what? I came here today, Pastor, because I, 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 I came here with my family, but I realize how much I need Jesus, and I need his grace, and I realize the sacrifice he made for me. I don't want to live the rest of my life not knowing who Jesus is and having that personal relationship. If that's you right now, with every head bowed and every eye closed, being real with yourself, being real with God, being honest, just slip up your hand and say, Pastor, I, just, I couldn't raise my hand a moment ago because I'm just not sure where I'm at. Lift up your hand right now, right, right where you are. If that's you, lift your hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, wherever you are, lift your hand, come on. Just lift it up and say, pray for me, Pastor, because I'm just not sure. How many more? Thank you, right there, I see that hand, I see that hand. I see that hand, I see those hands, come on. That right back there, I see your hand back there. I see your hand right there, right there. I see your hand right there, right there. I see hands going up all over this room. Pray for me, Pastor, because I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure where I stand with God, but I, there's no need in me leaving here today without knowing because you know what? Jesus wants a relationship with you. He shed his blood to do that. He gave his life because he loves you and he wants to fellowship with you and he wants to wrap his arms around you. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. This is the real deal. This is not a decision about buying a car or buying a house or what kind of relationship you're going to be in this is where you're going to spend eternity this is whether or not you're going to heaven or hell this is the biggest decision you'll ever make in your life why not now why not right now make a decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life if that's you lift your hands and say pray for me pastor I couldn't raise my hand a moment ago I just couldn't do it I couldn't do it. Hands have gone up all over this room. Now, this is what I want you to do. If you lifted your hand just then, he said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father. I don't want you to wait another second. I don't want you to wait on somebody else to go. If you lifted your hand that you said, hey, I, I'm not sure where I stand with God. I want you to step out of your seat and come stand with me right now. We're going to pray a prayer. Don't, don't let somebody beat you. Don't let somebody else be the one to come. You be the first one. They're coming right now all over the room. Come on. They're making their way right now. They're making their way. Come on. Come on. They're making their way. Come on. Let them out. Let them out. Let them out. All over the room. Come up here and stand right in front of me. That's right. They're still coming. They're still coming. There's others. Come on. There's others. There's others. There's others. There's others. There's others. Come on. There's others. There's others. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now. Right now is that time. There's others of you that raised your hand. Why not today? Why not know where you're going to spend eternity? Why not accept Jesus right now? Why not make it right with him right now? Why would you want to spend eternity in hell? Why would you not want to make sure that things are right between you and God? I wish, I wish you would look at this today. Isn't it awesome to see people respond? To who Jesus is. Ain't this awesome? Thank you, Lord, for Calvary. Thank you, Jesus, for your shed blood. We celebrate you today, Lord. Let me tell you something, guys. We're going to make this simple today. We're going to make this just as simple as we possibly can. Jesus loves you. And he gave his life so that you could live. And this is your opportunity to know that you know that you know where you're, where you're headed. And to build a relationship with him. It begins today. And it begins with a simple prayer just like this. Pray this prayer with me. Help me pray it all around this room. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner in need of grace. Forgive me, Lord. For anything in my life that's unpleasing to you. Today, I choose you, Jesus. Today, I believe in my heart that you died for me. With my heart, I believe it. With my mouth, I confess it. I confess you as my Lord and as my Savior. From this day forward, I will follow Jesus. From this day forward, I will honor and love you, Lord. The old is past, and the new has come forth. I am a new creature. 
in Christ Jesus today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, somebody. Today, today, today you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Today old things are passed away, but today all things have become new. Today, for you, it's a new life in Him. For you, it's a new beginning. Throughout the rest of this day, you'll honor God, worship God, praise God because of your new life in Him. Amen? Now, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. I want to do something special for you. And you, and you may already have a, a Bible and that kind of thing, and I'm glad you do, but I want to give you another one. And this is what I want you to do. I'm going to give you a paperback Bible, and I want you to write this date in that Bible. Under that date, I want you to write, He hung in there. And underneath that, I want you to put, He hung in there for me. Huh? And when you do that, it's going to be a reminder. It's going to be a reminder of the decision that you made today. And, and, and every time you're reminded of it, I want you to praise God for it. And also, we're putting this in your hand to remind you that we're here. That we're going to help you in this journey. 